All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the Benjinator, and you're watching Let's Play Xenogears, the greatest JRPG on Earth. Uh, this is my third take of this particular video. We had some technical issues, but uh, I think they should be all set now. So last time, we saw that there were some machinations behind the scenes on Solaris, or what's left of it. It seems like the Gazel Ministry wants to get rid of Kane because Kane doesn't want them using the, the Gaisha key. Which supposedly uh, unlocks some uh, haunting powers, uh, we can assume. But it also seems like uh, Krellian and Myung would also be okay with the use of the Geisha Key as well. Um, and they all seem to have their eyes on Ramses, who of course is suffering from a series of mental breakdowns at this point after being defeated not just by Faye, but also by Ellie. So he's kind of in a low mental state, so to speak. And so they're kind of goading him on and saying that he should be the one to take out Kane and perhaps replace him. Oh, interesting stuff. But in any case, we're also going to be heading into uh, the final uh, Animal Relic dungeon, uh, supposedly. We're looking for another one of these. We already had one that enhanced Billy's gear. And now we're going to be seeing, uh, hopefully, who's going to be next, who's going to be next to get their buff is it going to be emeralda is it going to be rico who knows so anyway we saw a little bit of that dungeon last time but now we are going to continue in this one so here we go so now we're just kind of hopping up right here uh it's really easy to not exactly know what to do at this part of the game but um there are ways and this is one of the enemies that we actually did not see last time, and this is the Griffin, of course. And the Griffin is, uh... Probably does the most damage out of any anything in this particular dungeon. Now, one thing I should mention, too, is that, uh... Billy, I forgot to get him standard ammo for his gear. And that is, of course, something that you never want to do. Um, if, if you're gonna use Billy, you have to keep a pretty tight eye on his, uh... On the use of his, um, well, basically on, on, on the use of his ammo, uh, because you can't really use them without it. Now remember, the elemental gun, both on ground and in gear, has infinite ammo. But that is not the case with everything else. With everything else, it's uh, somewhat of a different deal. Um, but of course I explained that many videos back, I just was not operating on my own principles, it seems. So... Got a fang from the griffin, and fang scales and ivory will be very valuable items, um, as you'll see later in the game. So, just talking to uh, Shopkeep Johnny. Got a Yamame sword for Citan. Not entirely necessary, since there's not going to be a whole lot of... Uh, since there's basically no dungeons left where you're going to be completely on foot. Um, and then, of course, I got some shotgun ammo for Billy, but I did not get the standard type, which is uh, kind of a shame. So, uh, nothing new as far as armor goes. This is all stuff that I purchased in the other anima dungeon. The black leather and the black helmet is, is about as good as it gets. And again, in this dungeon, there's not going to be a whole lot of going on foot anyway, so it's not a huge deal. It's mostly a gear dungeon. So, at this part, I am still trying to figure out exactly what to do. Uh, but then, after kind of dawdling around just a little bit, I climb back up. Yeah, so you get to see me do this sequence twice, because why the hell not? Uh, but then I notice that over there, there is a rock. And then I remember, ah, oh, I know what I'm supposed to do next. Is to push the rock. But first, we're going to be fighting this battle. Which, um... We've already seen these enemies, but the reason why I decided to keep this battle is because you get to see Setan's level 3 attack, which is actually quite cool. Um, or one of his level 3 attacks, I should say. Because I haven't really been showing off a lot of the uh, level 3 techniques. Uh, we saw a little bit of that with Bart in the previous dungeon, but I don't think that we've seen uh, Setan's level 3 attacks uh, in his gear, I should say. Which is kind of a shame, because Setan, of course, is has been, is now, and will be one of my favorite JRPG characters. Not just from sort of like a storyline perspective, but also just to use. He never disappoints never disappoints and of course now we're getting good use out of that kitchen sword with his uh with his gear which is which which definitely enhances it um i do believe though there is one more uh sword you can get 
with him uh, later on, near the end of the game, that's also super powerful. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I tried to use a level 3 attack with Billy, and uh, that just kind of went badly because I didn't have the ammo. And you, you of course, just saw, what was it, Kinjin? Something like that. Um, began with a K. I, I just, it, it kind of went by me, but it's it's a really powerful attack that uh, C10 can use. Uh, coincides, I believe, with his, uh, with his double X attack. So yeah, you just push this, and then what you have to have to do is you have to get out of this gear, and you have to enter this door. So there's not going to be any battles here, but this is a really annoying um, puzzle, and this is this is actually the most successful attempt that I'm showing you right now. So each of these pillars will tell you something, some kind of hint to get three stones. Three stones is what you want here, and each pillar will be giving you a little bit of a hint. And this one right here is an important one. The truth is back there. You read that, you go to the back, and the stone comes down. Pretty easy. And then what you do is you jump on this rock right here. You jump on that pillar in the center. See, I'm trying. And then you jump up like that. And then, then there goes the, uh, the, next pill uh, the next stone. So that's important. Um, and then there's also literally writing on the walls. And that, this one right here is, is going to be the most important one. It tells you to go four steps south and ten steps west. Now, you're going to see that I'm going to be trying this uh, twice, and it's not going to work. And the reason why it's not working is because, for some reason, this is a little bit of a glitchy puzzle. You have to push those two stones that you just summoned down into their respective holes before you can get this third one. For some reason, and there's, there's not really any... Uh, explanation or any kind of hint that this is the case but for some reason in this particular dungeon uh in this particular puzzle i should say uh you have to push the other two stones first in there and these other writings on the wall these are just kind of giving you hints about uh the other two stones which you've already figured out like but if you're having trouble those will those will help you out um so what you do is you just push these stones into their holes it's a little hard sometimes to do so uh, but they go along a single track in the floor. Like, you can't just push the stones anywhere. They'll they'll follow that pretty judiciously. Um, and then, yeah, because I was trying to push it towards the, towards the one on the left, but it wants to go to the center. So now we're going to try this a third time, and this time I'll be successful. But even with, even if you follow the steps exactly, like I was actually counting these steps, it's not an exact science. Like, I'm just kind of poking around. You have to kind of hit the X button for a little while. And then you just you just have to kind of do this, and then eventually, yeah, you'll you'll get this. So I mean, it's more like five steps in actuality. The definition of a step is a little bit circumspect. So once those stones are pushed into place, as you're seeing, there's going to be rumbling, and something's going to happen. It's going to be all kinds of just awesome. Well, not really. <laughs> what this does is it causes a seismic shift. And you see those two pillars right there? Well, yeah, they're going to come together. Just like that, and stop in the middle. And now they formed a bridge that you can jump over with your gears. So isn't that great? Isn't that just a fantastic security system? A really aggravating puzzle. And then you have to jump across cliffs. It's, it's beautiful. It's a thing of, of pure beauty and delight and sweetness. I'm being sarcastic, of course. So now we're just going to jump across here. And uh, this is the part where uh, I continuously had glitches where the, the game footage would just freeze. But we should actually be okay this time. So for some reason, I'm getting out of my gear. I'm not exactly sure why I'm doing that. It makes exactly zero sense. When you can just kind of walk through with your gears right here. So then you're going to come to this part here. And you'll notice that there's water with a bunch of treasure chests there. Don't worry about those for now. Uh, you'll be able to take care of those later. And so here you want to be able to get out of your gears and you have to go and look, look like these little happy little pixels. Um, but fortunately, you will not run into any battles on the way here. And then we go into the next area that uh, you get to wander around in. And I kind of like the, uh, I kind of like this, I kind of like the, the general layout of this place. It's just cool graphically. Got a survival tent. Don't really need that at this point in the game, especially because uh, we have um, so many Omega Souls. Um, but I guess if you run out of them in a pinch, you can be okay. So this next room is kind of weird. You want to leap uh, onto that treasure chest, uh, then get off of it, and then open it. Just like that. The Rose Tabard. It's a hat. It's got some defensive power. Um, and the Aqua Soul DX. Well, we've seen plenty of those. 
And so here, you want to read this uh, this little thing. Fear not the doctor's darkness of the walls, for if you keep moving forward, you will find. So there's holes in the ground. Um, that's why I wanted you guys to leap. And that one, that first hole, just leads nowhere. This just takes you back, as you'll see. Um, but you want to aim for the second hole. That's, that's kind of what you want to do. Um to advance and so the the whole thing that that hint the, the hint on the stone is giving you is you want to keep moving forward when you're falling down the second one so keep, keep hold down on the up on the on your d-pad and you'll be able to enter this door right here so that's kind of cool yeah just like that <laughs> so just hold forward and that second hole the first hole it's not gonna it's not gonna help you it's just gonna bring you back down so this part is actually pretty interesting looks like we're fucked Oh no, here come the spikes. It's so tragic. So then of course you wanna you wanna you wanna jump there. But this leads you back. So you wanna try this again. That hint said, uh, show some courage and stand your ground. So what you do is you literally just stand here and let the ceiling drop. And you'll see that something's gonna happen. Watch this. So it comes down. Oh, and look, there was a hole in the center. So you're actually okay. Then you can just kind of ride this up. So isn't that cool? It's all about angling, folks. From the angle that we were looking at that, it looked like the spikes were going to were gonna mash us up. But turns out that there was a big old hole. And uh, Faye did not bother to look up and inform the player of this whole thing. So, yeah, this, this leads to the next area. And this puzzle, this puzzle coming up is actually a little bit difficult. So, um, this is a, a water puzzle. And the way that it works is that that switch on the left will lower the water and the switch on the right will fill water up. Or, okay, n never mind, the reverse. The one on the right will make it go down, the one on the left will fill it up. And so these little things on the right and the left that, that say seven and three, what you want to do is that it recommends, like, it's... The water level is between 0 and 10. Right now it's at 0, right? And so if it's on 7, that means that it's good. if you fill it up 7, it's going to go up to level 7. What you want to do is you want to hit this one. This one goes to level 3. And you want to get it to level 5. So step on it once. That goes up to level... F that goes up to 3. Step on it once again. This is going to go up to 6. And then you want to go up to 9. So to make sure that it gets an odd number, there we go. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to switch it over to 7. This is the interesting thing. So this will go to 7. Right now the water level's at 9. And then you want to empty it down to 2. 9 minus 7 equals 2. So, um, then what you want to do is you want to go back to 3. And you now, now, that, now that you're on an even number, you can put this up to 5. So that is a real pain in the ass, but uh, there is actually uh, a writing on the wall, I, d I didn't show it, that says that not too much, not too little. And so what that basically means is like, it, it's, it's implying that you want to bring it up to water level 5. Instead of 0, instead of 10, instead of 7, instead of 3, you want to bring it up to 5. So just to review, it's uh, get it down to 0, switch to the 3 marker, go 3, 6, 9, switch it over to the 7 marker, drain it to 2, switch it back to the 3, and then fill it up to 5. So that's how it works. I mean, it sounds easy, but I, I had to look this up to figure it out. I had to go to some ancient game facts uh, page to, to get it properly. <laughs> um, and that took me a couple tries, too. And now we're, we're going back down. We're just shortcutting it. <laughs> because why not? Uh, so this is the easy way to get back down. And so what you want to do is you want to go out here. I'm just trying to think if I missed something. I, I might have missed a treasure chest or, or what have you, but... Ah, well. Like I said, this is this is like a 95% a uh, completion, if that. So um, I'm not going to be getting every single little thing, but I'm going to be trying my best. All right, so now that we have access to those treasure chests, uh, we're going to be... We're gonna be grabbing them, getting back in ideas. Just like a, just like a couple of nice people. King's Helm, that's pretty cool. That's uh that'll protect your head on foot. 
And uh, there, of course, is a treasure chest. And that's an ether doubler. And you can use that to double the power of your ether. If you use ether, which I, which I noted in my last video that I pretty much don't ever. So. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why I went on foot, foot in that door, but, you know, we'll just kind of leave it at that. Or is that the only way that they'll let, let you in? Okay. No, never mind. All right, so... Saving here is very important. You definitely want to take take advantage of that save point because uh, you're absolutely going to need it. So now we're going to be getting to this door. We're going to have to dismount from our gears, go into midget mode, so to speak. And voila. Does this look familiar? It means we're about to embrace the power of the Anima Relic. I wonder who it's going to be this time. But yeah, that dungeon um, does... I showed you a very edited version of getting through that dungeon. It usually takes longer just because you have to try to figure all this stuff out if you don't have a guide. So it can be... It can be a bit of a brain tease. Oh, look, there's Ellie and there's uh, Rico. Does that mean Rico's next? I would guess that it's Rico's next. Because he's talking. Yep, there he is. Saying something to Rico Benderas. Woo! Oh man, that's that's gorgeous. I love those anima relics, they look so cool. They got the little eyeball thing in there. Yeah, so that's Rico's gear. It's a, it's a pretty cool one, and we're gonna be getting to see a little of that later on, actually. Uh but not for the next battle. The next battle that we're going to be saying is, uh, it's going to be a little different. <laughs> Alright, so we're just strolling on out. Strolling on out. Everything's cool. We're strolling on out. What's happening? Faye, you got the premonition. Oh, man. Is this going to be some gigantic kraken? Huh? Oh, hello. Oh, my God, it's Hammer. Yeah, Hammer, you, uh, you turned on us, didn't you? Uh. Super strength. Krellian? Oh, man. Uh-oh. He's getting all puffy now. Damn it, Hammer. You were just some weird, mutated, uh, being before. Who sold us stuff, and now you've turned evil. I dislike that. And even Rico's upset. Alright, so this is one of the most irritating battles of all time. And the reason why, is as you'll see, is because... Um, well, this is the end of the episode, so we're going to pick that up next time. But um, what you'll actually see is that if you don't kill a hammer in a set amount of time, um, he blows up, he self-destructs, and... If he self-destructs, you won't be able to get a very important item from him. So, how is that battle going to go? Well, I'll find out in the next episode of Let's Play Xenogears. This is the Benjinator, and thank you guys for watching.